Hi everyone, I'm Luca and I'm one of the authors of SimNet, learning reactive self-driving simulation from real-world observation. This work would not have been possible without the essential contribution of all my colleagues, so a big shout out to all of them. Before diving in, we strongly believe in empowering the community, so all the code, models and results from this presentation are available as open source in our GitHub repo called L5Kit, so please check that out. This work has been carried out at Lyft Level 5, where we are building a self-driving system to increase access to safe and reliable transportation for people everywhere, we are a team of more than 300 people from offices in the US and the UK. Today you will hear about simulation and self-driving. I will start by briefly explaining what simulation is and why we think it's crucial for the deployment of autonomous vehicles in the real world. Then I'll present different approaches to simulation. Finally, I'll tell you about our solution called SimNet and what we can do with it. So let me start by telling you how we usually test our self-driving vehicle or SDVs. After a new model or feature has been developed, we request a road testing in the real world. A safety driver is always in the car and can take control of it before things go sour. Then we retrieve the logs of this session and we evaluate them to understand if a new feature is making our progress in the right direction. However, you may have already spotted a couple of issues with this approach. First, road testing is really, really expensive and it's not only a matter of money, it's also the time involved to go from shipping the feature to actually being on the road, as it includes getting the required permission, setting up the vehicle and con contacting the safety driver at least. This makes road testing almost impossible to scale over a certain volume of feature to test. Second, all this driving experience is not reproducible. Testing how true model will behave in the exact same situation is just not possible because we can't control the world around us to reproduce the situation over and over again. So then we come to what we call the self-driving vehicle's many billions question. How can we test our model performance offline? Because if we know this answer, we can then test hundreds or thousands of features in a very short time and get closer to the correct solution much faster. We strongly believe that simulation is the answer. So let me tell you more about it. First, let me tell you how one of our self-driving cars sees the world around while operating. The SVD has access to its own position, shown here as a red box. Uh, we also use semantic map information, so it knows the different lanes of the road, which are shown in grey, or the location of crosswalk, shown in yellow. The SVD can access dynamic map information, such as the traffic light colors at an intersection. And you see an example of it here, where the traffic light switches from red to green at the beginning of the video. The STV also senses other agents of the road, shown here as blue boxes. It sees the movement and at the same time he has to take decision about what to do next. And he can see the reaction of other agents to its own behavior. So in this setting, the task of simulation can then be framed as replicating what the SDV would experience in the real world and checking whether the, its decisions are correct. And in practice, this requires simulating all other agents of interest. So next, I will tell you about the different way that we can perform this simulation. The trivial way to do simulation is what we call log replay. The name comes from the fact that we are replaying the offline data of the episode for all the agents. So let me show you an example. What you see here is a previous recorded episode of the SDV driving in the real world. This comes from road data collected during a road testing. What we can do now is to plug the planner in while keeping all other agents as they were in the log, uh, so just replaying them. And in this case, there is little difference between what the planner is doing and what the SDV did in the log, so everything looks pretty nice. So is that it? Have we solved simulation and can we claim the final prize? Well, not really. This approach has in fact a huge and well-known issue. And the issue is that the agents have no brain at all and they will just follow the path written in the data so that if the SDV is lower or completely stop, like in this illustrative example, the agents behind will not slow down and will eventually run over it. This simulation is also referred to as non-reactive exactly for this very reason. Another approach we can take is a scripted simulation. This is what you usually get when you run an experiment in a simulator like Carla. In this case, the agent has scripted to follow certain rules given certain condition. This solved the problem of completely unreactive simulation, but it also comes with its own issue. Uh, the fact is that the world is a very complex place and a simple set of rules won't be enough to describe all the agents around the SDV. Scaling this set of rules to encompass all the possible scenarios is unfeasible. We need in general something that scale with the data and not with the number of lines of code we write. 
What we propose is the follow Seminet, a machine learning simulation system which learns agent behavior directly from data, without any need for handwritten rules. Because of the way Seminet learns, the more data we fit to it, the more powerful it can get. At the same time, because this data comes from real-world examples, it already embeds all the properties that we want in our simulation, such as realism or reactivity. After training Simnet on logs of real-world agents' behavior, we can use this model for the agents during the simulation. Take this scene, for example, where our SDB has been manually stopped. If we were to use log replay agents, the car behind would just run over us without noticing it. Now, after training our Simnet, we can use it to control that agent. This time, the car behind would properly stop and keep its distance. Next, I will tell you more about how Simnet works, and I will also show you some very interesting qualitative and quantitative results. Talking more about the model itself, Simnet is a deep convolutional neural network, trained using behavioral cloning. For each sample and at each time step, we compute the error as L1 norm between the predicted trajectory and the ground truth one, and we map propagate it through the network. This doesn't sound really complex, does it? And in fact, it's not. We found out that this vanilla approach works incredibly well for our case, and we don't really need to come up with any small tricks to improve our model performance. What we do need, though, is data. A lot of data. Simnet is trained on a recently released Lyft L5 dataset. This is the biggest dataset publicly available for research in self-driving. He has more than a thousand hours of driving time and millions of agent trajectories available. These trajectories include complex maneuvers that were performed by the agents in the real world. We train the model over a cluster of 64 GPUs and the whole training takes around 12 hours. Finally, we can take this trained model and use it for our machine learning simulation. Let me dive just one step deeper into how Simnet works. Starting from a given frame in the scene, we can get the context of each agent of interest that we want to control. Next, each agent is forwarded to the model independently, and the prediction from Simnet is used to compute the agent's movement in the next frame. The agent is then placed according to its prediction, and the process is repeated from the next frame in the scene. As such, this process is not all iterative, uh, in the sense that it's repeated in the same way across the scene, but also autoregressive, as the action taken by an agent influence the next states and therefore the next action. Next, I'll present some qualitative and quantitative results from Simnet over our dataset. Let me show you some qualitative results first. On the left-hand side is the initial frame from a log that we feed to Simnet. In this case, it's a busy intersection. On the right-hand side, you can see the simulated scene where all agents are controlled by Simnet. Uh, Simnet is predicting a mixture of various behavior depending on the agent location and the context around it. As an example, on the top left, some agents are stationary, waiting for the red light. And on the bottom, agents are driving through the intersection. Some are driving straight, some are making a turn, and they are all able to follow the lanes correctly and behavioristically. Let me show you some other qualitative example of Simnet in action. In this intersection, Simnet correctly executes a right turn for the agent in the middle of the picture. Also, many others are correctly predicted as stationary because of the red traffic light. In this straight section, instead, all the vehicles in the driving lanes are driven with a reasonable pace, and they follow their line nicely. On the other hand, parked cars are rightly predicted as stationary. Finally, in this last busy intersection, Simmet predicts a mixture of interesting maneuvers. While some agents are predicted to go straight, in the top left of the image, others are taking a turn, and one is even making a new turn. Again, what you see here is not log replayed, but entirely simulated by Simmet. And if you struggle to see the difference with real-world log, well, that, that is really great, honestly. We also report a quantitative analysis of similar performance in terms of the two key metrics we care about, reactivity and realism. We measure reactivity as the number of times an agent can come to a halt without hitting a static SDB. Compared to log replay, Simnet is highly reactive in this context and can almost always stop in time. For realism, we measure it as an average displacement error between the Simnet trajectories and the log replay one. As shown in the plot on the right, the more data we feed to the model, the better it gets. So, with an almost complete reactivity and a very low error, even at tight second, we can safely say that Simon is the perfect candidate for simulating the planning system. And once we do that, we can then evaluate how the SDV behave in this new reactive simulation. In this setting, the AV is controlled by a planner, inspired by the famous Shafronet, while all other agents are controlled by Simon. We compare this against log, re log replay, where only the planner is in place, while all agents are replayed. And we want to highlight two results from this table, which are really interesting. The first one is the number of real collisions shown in green, which decreased by a factor of 30x with Simnet. 
those rare collisions from the log replay scenario are in fact false positive and they will not happen in the real world where the car behind us would adapt its speed. And this result is really great as it allows us to evaluate our SPD in a more concrete, correct way. The second interesting result is the passiveness, shown in red. This metric is triggered if the SDV is studied for too long. Introducing SimNet have increased this value by almost 4x. This looks like a bad thing, but in truth, is actually a really good indicator of an issue in the planner itself, which was hidden before when using log replay agents. But first, let me show you an example in the reduction of false positive collisions. What you see here is a very common scenario when using log replay agents. The planner is driving slightly slower than it was doing in the log. However, the car behind it doesn't have a way to react and eat the STV. Now, when we plug some SIMNET in, the agent can moderate its speed now and avoid the collision entirely. So SIMNET completely removed this false positive collision detected previously and allow us to really evaluate how the STV behave for this scene. Now, when we look at the passive issue instead, we can see a somehow unexpected behavior going on. On the left, the SDV has been waiting at an intersection for a while. But as soon as the car behind it approaches and starts moving, the planner quickly springs into action and pull away. The same scene is playing on the right, and Simret is in control of the agents now. Because there is a car stopped in front of it, the agent is waiting this time. However, this also makes the plan to wait indefinitely. What is going on here is an example of causal confusion of the planner. The planner has learned that the car behind the SDV leaks a signal for its movement, which can be exploited to better fit the data. The issue was totally hidden behind the log replay agents before, but, but by plugging SIMNET in, we have exposed it and now we can work to fix it properly. This leads us to our conclusions. I hope I've convinced you that simulation is a key component for a quick and scalable evaluation of self-driving compared to the more expensive road testing. However, a trivial simulation cannot reproduce well the complexity of the real world. And as such, we propose SIMNET, a machine learning approach to simulation, which is learned entirely from raw data and can achieve high realism and reactivity. SIMNET can be used during the simulation to help measure the performance of the SDV and to provide a better understanding of how the planner works by exposing issues which are hidden behind log replay agents. That's all from us. Thank you so much for your attention. Let me remind you that everything we have shown today, including code and pre-trained models for SIMNET, is available online in our open source repo at Oh, and we are still hiring, so come and join us.